In module 13.3, we're going to spend um, pretty much all the time in that module talking about applications of the second derivative. Um, we're going to be going back to optimization problems, which we encountered before with single variable functions. But in this case, what we want to do is just take a look at getting some practice taking second derivatives of functions, uh, where in each case we're differentiating with re respect to different variables at each step. So one of the key things to pick up on with this is just making sure you understand what this notation means. The way this is expressed, we're always going to differentiate with respect to this variable first, and then this variable second. So this would be the same thing as f sub x sub y. So in order to find this, we'll start off by finding f sub x, which in this case will be 3x squared times y. That becomes 0, that becomes 0. So our first derivative is just 3x squared y. And then our second derivative, we took the derivative with respect to x. Now we want to take the derivative with respect to y. So that derivative just becomes 3x squared. In part b, we're taking the second derivative of z with respect to y. And that squared basically just means both times take the derivative with respect to y. So this would be the same thing as f sub y, y. So we'll start off by first finding the first derivative with respect to y. So that will be x cubed minus 8y to the third power. And then taking the derivative of that function now with respect to y, x cubed becomes 0. And minus 8y cubed becomes minus 24y squared. So now all we want to do in parts C and D is take the given values for x and y, substitute those into the functions, and come up with the results. In this case, we come up with 12 and 12 for each one. Um, this is kind of a weird example the book decided to give you. Um, there's not really any specific pattern that when x and y are the same, these two separate derivative functions will come out to be the same. So it turned out to be the case this time But these two results aren't necessarily always going to be equal. If we find the derivative, the second derivative one way, and then find the second derivative a second way, it's likely that even with the same x and y values, we'll come up with different results here. So just to avoid kind of getting in the habit of assuming that the order of the derivatives doesn't matter.